Did you know there are Roman ruins that you can visit in Paris? And the same place is where a scandalous forbidden royal marriage took place. Both are true, and they happen to be at one of my favorite museums in the world. This is the Cluny Museum of the Middle Ages in the heart of Paris. This place goes so far back. We're going to go through some of the history of the place while looking at some of the artifacts and the Roman ruins, which you will see if you plan a visit here. I love that this complex of buildings is a combination of Middle Ages and Roman architecture. The Roman ruins that are here are sort of downstairs. When you come into the museum, you will find them down below. They are among the largest ancient remains of Roman baths in all of Europe. They are called the Frigidarium. They were the largest public baths in the ancient city of Paris, which was, I believe, called Lutece at the time. And they once covered over 6,000 square meters, which is more than 64,000 square feet. The original Roman baths had a hydraulic water system, an underground utility system of rooms. It consisted of hot rooms and cold rooms. And the cold rooms are all that you will see here. The Frigidarium were the cold rooms. It was built around the 1st or 2nd century AD, and was in use for about 200 years. There are amazing vaulted rooms you can walk through. Some have the original coatings and some have a little bit of the original artwork still in place. There's sort of a water, obviously a water theme still visible. The main vault is 14 meters high. The name here comes from the monastic order of Cluny. They had a large network of abbeys and three colleges throughout Europe with the Parisian college built here in the 13th century. The first abbot back then had an, a luxurious private apartment somewhere in Paris, which has been lost to time. It is only found in the archival records now, but the current opulent mansion was built in 1485 for the abbot then. It was called l'Hôtel des Abbés de Cluny, and while it was his private residence, the builders then incorporated the existing Roman ruins here into the complex of his private palace rather than take the ruins out to take the time and expense to demolish the ruins and then not be able to reuse or sell the materials they just incorporated and thank goodness for us english history fans you will find connections to the tudors and possibly even anne boleyn here in 1514 england's henry viii's younger sister mary tudor was sent to france to marry king louis XII as a political alliance and when he suddenly died on new year's day 1515 Mary was sent to the Cluny here to stay in sort of six weeks of seclusion slash house arrest in order to make sure that she wasn't carrying an heir to the throne. It's said that Francois sent Mary's English ladies home and that he supplied her with French ladies here while she was in sort of house arrest. But legend also has it that possibly a young Anne Boleyn and or her sister Mary were in attendance on Queen Mary during her time here at the Hotel de Cluny. In February of 1515, her brother Henry VIII sent his best friend and Mary's secret true love, Charles Brandon, over from England to set her affairs in order and sort of get everything arranged to get her home or possibly marry her to someone else, you know, as a royal alliance. Unbeknownst to basically everyone, she and Charles were secretly married here at the Cluny in late February or early March of 1515. Her brother Henry was enraged at his best friend and his sister, and accused them of everything right up to just about treason and betrayal and he did forgive his favorite sister but he did exact a stiff penalty from the couple starting with fining them 24,000 pounds to repay the cost of her wedding over six years and this would have amounted to today's money about 37 million dollars so this was huge he forced Mary to hand over to him all of her dowry that she had taken to France, all of the jewels and plate, and every gift that Louis had given her during her queenship of France, which was brief, including the famous jewel called the Mirror of Naples, which was an incredible table-cut diamond said to be the width of a full finger with a pearl hanging from it the size of a pigeon's egg. It's said that Mary sent it in the letter as a gift to Henry when she sent the letter to him saying that she had married Charles. And uh, it was said to be a gift from Louis to her on their wedding. And then Henry later said it was a gift to him from Louis. And then when Francois Premier became king of France, he argued that it was a part of the crown jewels of France, demanded it back. Henry wouldn't give it back. Uh, Francois offered to buy it and Henry set too high a price and, and so on and so forth. So it stayed in England. The last time it was heard of was in an inventory of Elizabeth I's jewels. 
From that point, it drifted down into legend, where it was said it was possibly sold to buy supplies for the English Civil War. Unfortunately, since that time, no gems matching this description have been found, so it is assumed that it was cut down and has been lost to time. You can also find a photo online of a drawing that was done of a room in the Hotel de Cluny that was said to be the room that Mary stayed in here during her confinement. It was called La Chambre de la Reine Blanche. But I can't find anywhere that that room still exists, or where it would be in this palace complex, but it sure would be neat to find it. The museum here came into existence in the 1800s because of an art collector named Alexandre de Somerand, who had gathered a vast Middle Ages collection of objects and moved into part of the hotel in 1832. After his death in 1843, the state acquired the Hotel de Cluny and 1,500 pieces from his collection, including the Roman baths, and there followed a large renovation of the area. There is an archaeological monastic garden here. I believe it is currently closed for an unknown period of time. But the ruins were integrated into the museum, and the whole thing was listed as a historic monument in 1862. And due to one of the most important Parisian archaeological finds of the 20th century, you will find here 21 of the 28 decapitated heads of the kings that once adorned the Notre Dame Cathedral. They were decapitated and removed during the French Revolution. The revolutionaries thought they were representative of kings in general. They actually represent the kings of Judah. And they were somehow unearthed during renovations to a private mansion's courtyard in 1977. So you will see those here, and they are amazing. Some more amazing things you'll find here are pieces of the original stained glass from the nearby Saint-Chapelle, which I did a video recently on. You can see the link above. Also, if you're like me and you love medieval tapestries, and I cross-stitch, so I have actually made two of these. The series of six tapestries called The Lady and the Unicorn. You can sit in a room and just take in these gorgeous original pieces from the 1400s, and you might even cry a little if you're like me. Also in 1977, about 5,000 pieces from the Cluny Museum were sent north to the newly created National Museum of the Renaissance at Daequan in France, which is high up on our bucket list of things to see next in terms of medieval art. If you visit, the layout and the pieces here may be different. This was from our first visit. We were here in 2019. I was here again in 2022 after the renovations. It's an easy walk if you're anywhere in central Paris, if you're anywhere near the Latin Quarter, the Saint-Germain, the Ile Saint-Louis, you can easily walk here. Check their website for closures. I think it's closed on Mondays. You can probably get tickets online and skip the line, although it's never that crowded. Check and see. I believe you can take advantage of it being open for free on the first Sunday of every month as well. And there are some evenings where it is open late until 9 p.m. on some nights. And there is, I believe, a new cafe here as of late 2022. And if there's a histopad offer, definitely take it. They make this the whole walk through these museums. They bring it to life. They add a lot of colorful, instructive stuff to see as you go through the museum. We actually walked from here and made a day out of it. We went from here to the Saint-Michel Fountain, over to Notre Dame. We went to the Bird Market and to Saint-Chapelle. You can also see our more recent full museum video right here. Let us know in the comments if you've ever visited the Roman ruins here or this collection of medieval masterpieces. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.